Coach Tim Rebo following a 42 to 17 loss against Tulane, a team that came out hungry, ready to play. Big play is the difference in this one. Yeah, I think uh, I thought we were ready. I thought our guys came out. I thought we played hard. Uh, we didn't we didn't play well at times. And, and anytime you don't stop the run like that, it's gonna be hard to beat a good football team. And they got that running game going, and uh, defense was on the heel a little bit. But near halftime, we're still in the game. You know, we, we left some points on on the field. We didn't we didn't put them on the board. So. Uh, Listen, we just got to get back to work. It really is incredible that they have those big plays, but you cut it to 21-10, going into the half, you cut it to 28-17, not for a couple of crucial yeah. third down conversions, you'll have a chance yeah, to make yeah. it a one possession game. Yeah, that was big. We got to get off the field. They, they busted. It started in the first half, they hit a, a big third down, gave them a little momentum, and then in the second half, they got a couple third and, and longs, and they've got to get off the field. Coach, your, your teams just never get down, even on the sideline or right here walking past them. I, we're already hearing, guys, we got McNeese at 6 p.m. next week, let's be ready. Well, I mean, you know that. Your message is going to be tomorrow. Is it, we're zero and zero, and we got to get back to you know uh, conference game, conference opener. Uh, this is where it really starts. We'll see you at 6 p.m. Lake Charles, McNeese, and Nichols, ESPN Radio, New Orleans. And here we are, the start of Southland Conference play Saturday at McNeese. Colonels ready to roll in their first of nine games in SLC play. Welcome to the Tim Rebo TV show. My name is Bryant Johnson. Coach Rebo, you've had a couple days after Tulane to get your team set for McNeese, but more importantly, to, to notice that there were so many positive elements in this game. You outgained Tulane, a couple big plays late, really was the difference. Yeah, well, we have to find the positives because we got to move on. Uh, just like when we beat Kansas the week before, we had to move on the next week. Well, after a loss, we got to move on to this one. And uh, we, we did find some positive things that happened. Uh, and, then, and then we pointed out some of the negatives, too, to know if we want to get to where we want to get to moving forward, that we can't make some of those mistakes that we made. We got to be able to tackle better. We got to, as we mentioned earlier, we got to be able to get off the field on third down uh, if we can do that. And then we had some chances in the red zone. We got to put some points on the board. We had a little uncharacteristic. Uh, Laron Fonseca, you know, didn't didn't have a great night. He missed a couple of them. You know, we talked about halftime 21-10. Uh, probably could have been 21-16, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know we fell down early. Remember the first drive, we had a little trip, so we had some opportunities to do that. But give them guys some credit; they ran the ball. We didn't stop the run very well, uh, and that's what we need to do. We'll take a look at a, a few of the Colonel highlights from what became a 42 to 17 game. But you see, Gabe Fuseli get the first touchdown of his career. What a, a major impact player he's been in just two weeks with your program. Yeah, he, he he had a really good game. He's a big third down guy for us. He made some tough catches for us. He got us going, so it was good to see break out a little bit. Speaking of breakout performers, Dontrell Taylor, hey, go ahead, 32 yards right up the middle. Couple explosive plays to counter a Tulane team that was relying on explosive plays yeah, all night. He, he ran the ball hard, he ran it well for us. Uh, he didn't get un uncorked a week before against Kansas, but it was good to see him bounce back. Dontrell had a great couple of years for us. We're going to need him the rest of the way also. He does have a 19-32 and 32 yard touchdown the first two weeks of the season against two high-profile FBS opponents. Yeah, you know, you see his blitz right here, the quarterback. Boy, he's a big old, good-looking quarterback. He was, he was hard to bring down. Uh, it was good to see us finally gang tackling, picking him up. Evan picking up the fumble, stumbling a little bit. Uh, you know we got on him about that. That he's uh, That's why he's not a running back. He could have scored on that play. Your defense has now come up with nine sacks in the first two weeks of the year. And here is Gabe Fusilay, a little somersault Ferris wheel effect on a huge 20-yard completion. Yeah, he goes up and gets the ball. You know, he can go to those out routes and he gets flipped over right there, or he can go over the middle and make the tough catch for you. Uh, he bounced right back up and he was ready to go. Uh, your heart stops whenever you see a player take that type of motion and play. Uh, you knew that he was going to have a major impact on this team in the slot spot, helping you out in special teams, but to see it so early in his career? Yeah, you know, he, he fit in because he got here this summer and he worked so hard. Uh, you know, after spring ball, he worked hard all summer. And then, you know, Mason went down, and he was a guy to step up and be ready to go. Him and Stefano got to get get going. And then uh, Ty Smith, we moved him from running back to that slot spot. So we got to get some production out of those three. Gabe Fusile, great three years with UL. Of course, you have a, a long history with him from your time working together when you were the DB's coach at ULL. Now the Colonels, they pivot quickly. They've got McNeese on Saturday. We'll take a quick look back at, at what happened in Thibodeau last year between the Colonels and the Cowboys and continue on with the Tim Rebo TV show right here on HTV.